that is the most amount of vowels I've ever seen in one word. Fasumaluai. Fasumaluai? It's actually pretty easy to pronounce, that one. <laughs> but, um, but yeah. The, the, but the, the, the point I'm making with that, I suppose, with him and with Eisenhoof, they're not people that I know. Like, Riley Jack's played in this game, Marion Seve played in this game. They've got a few... The Storm were not at their full strength. And the Panthers were close to full strength, like you say, and they, the Panthers took advantage of the, of the situation. And that's not something you would have expected a Cleary Panthers side to have done. <laughs> so it's impressive that they've done it, I think is the kind of point I'm making there. Yeah, uh, on yeah to, no, no. Uh, on to James Graham's last game in the NRL, it looks like. It was the Titans 8, the, eight, the Dragons 20. Graham had 103 metres, which is... Um, uh, good for him with the short sort of stints that he's doing this year. Um, I I watched this game because I, I thought, <laughs> oh, it's going to be Graham's last game in the NRL, so I'll watch this one. Didn't watch it at 6 a.m. I think I watched it whenever I woke up. Um, and I can't remember watching it. I, but now I'm looking at the team sheets. I can remember it. I can remember Corey Thompson played for the Titans, got injured early on, and for some reason passed his head test but didn't come back on. And... The biggest problem, I think, at the moment that Justin Holbrook... Well, no, he's got a lot of problems. Goal line defence, um, general joining up of play, <laughs> um, not making unforced errors. But one of the real problems he's got in this squad is Tyrone Peachy. Tyrone Peachy's played Origin in recent seasons. Everyone talks about his utility value and, and that sort of stuff. But... I just don't see what he's bringing to this side at the moment. I really don't. Where, Whenever and wherever you put him on... I mean, this game it was useful because you could put him into the centres when had to mix things around when Thompson went off. But that's not going to get the best out of Tyrone Peachy. But I really have no idea how in this Titans side, with these kind of up and down front rowers who aren't consistently setting a platform for you... And then you've got like offload happy people in the second row, like Cartwright, who helps you go backwards sometimes with those skills, even yes. though he can pull something out of nothing at times. I don't see how Tyrone Peachy helps this side. No, but that, that that's not new. That's not a unique problem to the Titans. He had that problem at the Panthers, yeah. and he's had that problem everywhere. He's um, what, what, what's you know there's, there's some uh, there's some quote about being a you know. Um, quite good at some things and not very good at one thing specifically. Um, yeah, he's he's not what you want in any of those positions as a first choice. So he might be second choice in a lot of those positions, but that, in many ways, that's the waste of cap space, in, I think. Um, that's, that's what I mean, yeah. I yeah. He has to resolve that. He has to, he has to find a team... They have to find a team that know that they want to play Peachy at six or know that they want to play Peachy at in the centres or yeah. even know that they want to play him at 13 but know how they want to use him yeah he because then like when he's on the a... field he might actually have direction like when he comes on the field for the Blues when he's played for them he <laughs> although he's all over the place he knows what his job in that team at that time of the game is I don't think he's clear on what his role is with the with the Titans and I and I've watched Justin Holbrook coach a side where every single player was absolutely clear on their role. So I'm not thinking it's necessarily a per the person delivering the message that's the problem. No, you're right. But at the same time, I think I think I think Peachy played three different positions in this match oh. because of injuries. So it's kind of like you're also not helping him there. <laughs> That's true, that's true. And after the so, Dragons, obviously they won this game and won it reasonably comfortably um, yeah. in the end. In fact, they, you know, they they dominated the game really because the, the Titans only scored very late on. Um, Zach Lomax, young, skinny centre. We already talked about one of them before in the Ravitos <laughs> game. He's really starting to shine, um, I think. He had maybe his best game in first grade uh, in this game. I also think that Adam Clune was far better in this game than I've seen him be for the Dragons before. I'm not sure if something about having Norman next to him and Dufty at the back gives him more of a a chance to feel relaxed that he's not expected to be the main 
kind of creator and so he can actually be more creative because there's less pressure on him to create in a strange way yeah i mean because to be fair i didn't i didn't see a lot from Car- um uh, from norman in this one to be frank no. uh, for me the, the the key thing um with the dragons is keep the same team in the same positions and it does it does wonder, wonders for you Duffy I, I also think a key thing with them is like finding some way to make Pereira and Ravalawa actually keep hold of the ball more often because they are, they are creating lots of opportunities for those two wingers and those two wingers score some spectacular tries but at the they same do. time they bomb some sitters <laughs> They, they, they don't have the best hands between them. Um, it has to be said, but yeah, a settled lineup is the right. And, and you know, the, the, the dragons chopping and changing isn't a new thing. You know, they've they've done it for ages. And I know it's difficult when you're paying playing. You know, um, somebody you're paying a million pounds and he's basically your interchange hooker. Um, but if that's the right place for him, then that's where he should be playing, and he shouldn't be playing at seven. So. You know, th- th- there's absolutely nothing wrong. Um, it's winning them games, so is- isn't that yeah. what you're paying them the big dollars for? Yeah, win. Just win, <laughs> basically. Just win, baby. Just win, yeah. Um, well, we'll get to the Raiders later on, but that's the different Raiders who need to just win, baby. But anyway, uh, into the uh, last... I don't know, I can't remember. I didn't watch... I, this game was... Um, Hold on. The middle game on Saturday. Middle West game Tigers on Saturday. 36, Cowboys 20. Uh, Carsten got in touch on this one, Al. He did, and he said, wish it. Giving away 34 points in what in one half isn't good enough for that squad. Um, optional defence needs a really good attack to win games, and that's something we're missing too. I'm looking forward to the spoon battle with the Bulldogs and a new coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, actually, I would not I would have been less surprised if it was the Cowboys looking for a new coach after this weekend than the Warriors, if I'm completely honest, because the Cowboys look like a side who aren't putting full effort in and if yeah. if West Tigers have continued to play the second half like they played the first half which <laughs> is something that Michael Maguire, Maguire will want to address with this side but let's face it they're not used to winning they're not used to being say. four points ahead you know <laughs> I've got to say that second half was the most West Tigers thing I've ever seen you're 34 nil up and, you, and at the end, end you're hanging on it's absolutely bizarre but anyway that's I- that's the Tigers for you. It wasn't quite what? hanging on, but at least there was an element of excitement in it. And, you know, Kyle <laughs> Felt had some nice moments in there as well. Probably one player who doesn't need to feel like he's let his coach down in that um, in that Cowboys side. You know, the, the young kid at fullback, every credit that he's got a lot of talent, a lot of skill, doesn't need a nickname yet. He's played two games of first grade and he's had about <laughs> three or four good interventions and... and you know, he's not done much wrong, but let's not, like, let's not give him a nickname yet. <laughs> you know? How, uh, how do you pronounce his name again? Uh, the Hammer. <laughs> oh, shit, <laughs> I did it too. It's Hamiso Taboifido, isn't it? Or some tab- that's Taboifido. The, yeah, that's, that's, it, that's exactly it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just... <laughs> Uh, yeah, for the for the Tigers, they did score some nice tries in the first half, but a couple of them were another echo of what we saw last week with absolutely no goal line defensive effort from the Cowboys. And yeah. actually, you look at that Cowboys side, and there's not that many good players in it. No, there isn't. Um... I mean, is is Tamalolo and Maguire taking up that much of the cap that they can't pay for? A halfback, for example. Well, the, the, the trouble is probably they're you know they've got Morgan sat on the sideline, haven't they? Mm-hmm. Um, he's due back in a few weeks, but I, I don't, I don't think they've been particularly delighted with him. Kind of post winning the comp, you know, he's kind of been a bit in and out. Um, they do feel a little bit like they're a lot of their players are kind of reasonable players, but they're not. They're never going to quite step up. Kyle Felt's probably the exception that proves the rule. He's he's a very good player and would make it anywhere. But, but I, think I don't know. We, the, the, 
we we you could say the same looking at this Tigers lineup, and actually, like that team has probably got individuals who playing above the level you might expect them. I mean, Zane Musgrove had his best game that I've seen him play uh, in this one. Um, Alex Twal's going to be an absolute superstar in this competition for for seven, eight, nine years to come. Um, and I don't know if everyone would have expected that when when he first came in, and uh, and I just think that it's really getting the best out of his side um, is is Maguire and maybe bringing in someone like Reynolds who's you know more effort than than ability, um, even though he's got ability helps with with that that attitude that he's tried to build in this side maybe. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's um, that that yeah. yeah, yeah I, they can't be anything but disappointed though with only scoring a penalty goal in the second half. They should have absolutely murdered the Cowboys in the second half. They should have had 50 on the board without yeah. question. I mean, the circumstances for that last try before half time. I mean, you, look, you know, nothing was ever going to go the Cowboys way. They weren't going <laughs> to win this after that try. No. But uh, I suppose they at least made the scoreline look respectable, but really they should be dirty on themselves although like you say Tigers probably should have made them feel even dirtier yes a game that game of the round some people are saying it's one of the best games they've ever seen um, Roosters versus Eels and it was 24-10 in favour of the reigning Premiers versus the current leaders yeah um, so a couple, couple of people, people... In touch. what did they have to say Yep, so David Hunter says again, as a para fan, I'm mostly happy with the effort. Uh, they've a long way to go, but this was a good start. Important to bounce back next week. And that try by Sivo, it was, it was, a, it was, it was all right. And then Alan Walker says, a cracking game that had just about everything. Big hits, top tries, six of the best playmakers. b Moore's maturing like a fine wine. Even Fergo killing a cutout and apologising. <laughs> I did like that. Um, proper blood and guts, foot it. All at the best wank. Um, the two most exciting locks were excellent. Radley versus Brownie will get a rematch for sure. Get your tickets now if you can. Uh, Teddy KO'd, so he'll miss the undercard. Um, Moses didn't command a big game again. Dare say a three-peat. It's a bit early to be calling that, but um, this was a good game. <laughs> yeah, a good game by two good sides playing like good rugby, but you've got to say the Roosters show that they are still the best side and that first two weeks of this campaign was a bit of an aberration. Uh, maybe going and absolutely handing it to St. Helens as a, a took it out of them more than the NRL sides maybe expected. Um, it should have done. Um, and, and everyone was kind of saying what's going on here. But in reality, even when they pick up in-game injuries and stuff, they're still able to absolutely be the best side against a side that's playing really well. Of course, they were helped a lot by penalty goals in this game. <laughs> yeah, but it also helps the fact that they've got the Morris twins playing like they're 21. They're unbelievable. There's no way they could have expected this kind of level of play from them. This always happens when they get back together in the first season. <laughs> They've done it. It's because they had, a, they had an amazing season together at the Bulldogs. And then, do, do you think they're just delighted to see each other again? Yeah, I think it reinvigorates them. I think it's what they need every few years. They need a bit of space, and then they need to play together again. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Radley versus Brown was was built up, and I'd say delivered. Um, probably different types of players. Brown to me is a bit more physical, and Radley's a little bit more skillful, but. Neither yeah. of them back down from anything. I, I have to say, I mean, I think, I mean, we, we when we talked about loose forwards, I think you know we were talking a lot about the death of the you know the classic loose forward. Radley's probably as close as you can get in the game now, you know, wow. as a young and upcoming player. Fact, yeah, thanks for that clarification because you know Sean O'Loughlin's still playing, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Radley is like. The the potential of that guy is off the charts, and apparently uh, qualifies for for England. 
Well, get him signed up, Jesus! But, I, but to be fair, if if he's, I don't know if he's uh, if he's a maroon or a blue, but if he. 